it is Friday, finally. Um, this is Senate Government Operations. And um, I think that we don't really have anything on the agenda today except to review. Um, I wanna make sure that we keep up with S-124. Um, so, and, and we will do a couple charters if Tucker can join us, or it's one charter, but I think it's two two towns put together into one bill. Um, if, if Tucker can join us, because we just got it today. So if he can't, then um, we'll deal with it on Tuesday. Um, but so this morning, uh, I have been keeping Sarah Copeland Hanses up to date with our conversations. So um, I, yesterday I sent her the kind of lingering concerns that we had and those what we talked about yesterday was um, the governor appointing the chair, the whether it really should be NAACP, um, the facial recognition, the GAC, and the dispatch. I think that was pretty, that was mainly what we talked about. So I met with Sarah this morning and then um, we had a meeting with the leadership and then Betsy and Sarah and I met later on to um, hopefully come up with an amendment that they would be willing to do that would address some of our concerns and it would come from the government operations committee. Um, so um, I think Betsy Ann has the that amendment and I'll just tell you kind of where, how we landed, where we landed. First, let me um, just talk about the gap because uh, how that came about. <coughs> they apparently had some testimony from uh, Susanna Davis and Sue Zeller about the um, indicate the indicators and that we needed in this climate, we needed to address particularly the um, indicators that uh, indicated the well-being of our uh, those communities and people who are most marginalized. And um, so they worked around that. And so Sue Zeller and Drew, I can't remember Drew's last name. Grassley. Oh, yes. And um, Susanna worked with the committee to come up with that uh, a kind of expanded definition and asking GAC to look at indicators and come back with indicators. So that's where that was. So given um, the involvement of Sue and Drew around this, um, I felt more comfortable with it and that the GAC would this summer then, or this fall or whenever we do it, um, start looking at what those indicators might be in, in the outcomes, not changing the outcomes at all, but just the indicators. And so does Drew, does Drew work for Sue or with Sue? No, Drew yeah, is yeah. the, uh, Brian, she is AHS, yeah. AHS yeah. but she's their kind of data. Oh, Drew, our Drew that used to work for Shumlin. Yeah, Drew. Right. Yeah. yeah, Drew of the red hair, got it. Yes, so are there any questions or concerns about that? I, I thought that given all of that, inf that input that had come from those, p those, particularly those two, because they kind of help it guide us in GAC anyway, that we, it was okay. Brian? I think it, thank you, Madam Chair, and I agree. Um, as long as we're not gonna change outcomes, mm -hmm. I'm fine with taking another look at the indicators and obviously when we meet, we'll have Drew and uh, Sue come in and testify. So I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't change the outcomes. Anthony, were you gonna say something? I'm fine with that too. It's good. Okay, so Chris. Sorry. 
muted once again. Um, yes. Okay. No problem. Allison? Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's, we didn't ask them, I didn't ask them to do a, an amendment on that until, unless there was um, concern from the committee. The other one was the dispatch. And that seemed to be a non issue since they already do dispatch for emergency and fire. And so it's just saying that they can't do a, um, they can't impose fees until they come to us for the ability to do that. And I did talk about some kind of a, uh, not a cliff, but some kind of a, a phase in. And, and we decided that the best way to do that is to do that when we look at the fees themselves and to do a, a phase in. And um, I did still have the concern about, for example, the Waterbury um, or any town that, that um, contracts with VSP for their coverage. Part of that coverage must be um, dispatch but it got, it's so much in the weeds that um, I will just I guess we'll just pass it the way it is. And if if DPS calls Waterbury and says we're going to um, uh, uh, reduce, we're not going to dispatch for you anymore because we can't. Or we're, Waterbury says we're not going to pay for it because it says you can't. Then we'll have to deal with that. But I think that um, we should just leave it the way it is. Okay. Thanks. Anthony? No, that's fine. But isn't that where we had that whole conversation about not thinking that they were doing fire and whatnot? That they were... Yeah, but I guess they are. Okay. Yeah. That's fine then. Okay, so then the other one was the date uh, for Brian, the... Jeanette, Brian has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Thank you, Allison, for looking at me. Um, Nolan actually has uh, provided, um, let me pull, pull it up here, on our yeah. committee website, um, section 26 prohibits DPS from charging fees in any new contractual agreements to perform dispatch for state, municipal, or other emergency services until the General Assembly establishes. It's our understanding that DPS does not currently bill local entities for dispatch costs and as such, there should be no additional loss of revenue. Yeah. Um, I'm still not clear how many times DPS dispatches fire trucks or uh, ambulances, but I guess they must somewhere. So, yeah, and I, I think that that's an issue that we are going to have to look at next year about the whole dispatch and how we do that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine with it. Okay. So then the next issue um, was the the public say his name and he appears oh said Nolan's name and he appeared oh my god it's magic <laughs> I was watching I'm double zooming I was watching on YouTube and in SAC at the same time so oh can I just, okay. I just want to reconfirm that we're still your favorite committee I mean you usually tell us that but you know, you, you are you are my favorite committee, but I will say that Senator Colmore and Senator Polina are on my other new favorite committee of Senate Ag. <laughs> <laughs> How are, is it true that you only have, uh, let me see, 14 plus 11, 25 11. Favorite committees? Um, I think I staff 17. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I'm staffing a lot. I picked up Ag this year. It's been fun. Yeah, but you, st you staff issues so that those range by committee, just like here you are. So I'm staffing new issues this year. Right. And we're live, by the way. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Nolan. It's good to see you. We missed you. It's nice to see you all. What, what, what can I help you with? Oh, I don't. I think we're fine. Oh, yeah. well, great. We were, right. we were looking at your fiscal note and your... Yeah. About which is the dispatch. What Okay, yeah. you're commenting how well it was formatted. Got it. It, it, it was, <laughs> it was beautiful. So okay. what we're doing is going over. Um, the House is doing um, an amendment to S124, and we're seeing if we agree with that amendment. And so we can. We I want to make sure that this makes it to the finish line. 
So the next issue then was the inventory of public safety plans and resources. And um, I suggested July of 2021 and uh, Sarah called Peter and he said, could they have till December of 2021 because um, they have 50 towns and even if they have it done by July, it's not gonna do us any good July or December. So have them do it by December. Does that work? Yeah, sure. Okay, so that's that's in the amendment, right, Betsy Ann? <clears throat> okay, because she um, wanted to make sure she checked with him. Then the chair <clears throat> being appointed by uh, from non, their intent was to have the chair appointed from non-law enforcement, not to limit it to those seven um, public people appointed by the governor. So it could be any one of those seven, the person from Human Rights Commission, the victims, the Center for Victims Services, the Network and Domestic Violence, the um, Susanna, I guess that's it. So it could be any of those. They just, they felt pretty strongly that if, if the person that was the chair was from law enforcement that it would take on a certain tone. And there is some validity to that. And um, so they wanted it to make sure that it was um, a non-law enforcement person, which doesn't mean they may not be an attorney or something, but Brian? Yeah, I don't think it'll be any great surprise. I feel just as strongly it should be somebody from law enforcement. Um, to me, it's like having a plumber's union with, with no plumber. I mean, you have to sort of understand what you're doing in order to lead. I, I just, I feel very strongly that it, it's, uh, it's not a good idea. I think it needs to be uh, somebody from that occupation that is the chair. Okay. Um, I did the other three. Um, I, I, I think that um, the LEAB, for example, is all law enforcement. And there the chair is uh, somebody from law enforcement. And because this is kind of a, this is the committee that, uh, well, anyway, <clears throat> that, that's their proposal, and they said they felt very strongly about that. So I don't want the bill uh, to die over that. No, it's just disappointing that people don't trust a committee to choose its own chair. But they are well, opening it up. They are opening it up, just understand, they're opening up beyond the people that the governor appoints. Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, good. And did we We've also already opened up the committee or the council uh, to a much greater degree than it is currently. So right. I don't know. I, I just you could just say the majority of the committee was okay with it, I guess, Madam Chair. Okay. But that one really sticks for me. I just I don't think it's gonna work. Well, I think that uh, the really what um, the chair of this council is going to have to work very closely with the ED of the academy. I mean, I, I think that that's um, a given here because they're overseeing the academy. And so I, I think the feeling was that if you had the director of the academy and a law enforcement um, chair, <clears throat> that they would, they could, uh, as we know, chairs have so much power to um, set agendas and move in the direction you want to move. And so I think they felt that with the, the two working together that there would be, it would be more of a complement and better yeah, balanced. I, 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 I can see that, uh, but I, uh, it, you know, anyway. And it is hard to have something like this uh, set up their own um, <coughs> chairs at the very beginning right. because they don't know each other. 
So yeah, anyway, that's, that's true. Setting up but, your own chair at the beginning, it can often be kind of an awkward dance and it's been pre-negotiated. So someone walks in and someone else nominates and the vote goes a particular way. And it's, it's, it, it's not always so helpful and democratic because yeah. uh, there's no, <laughs> there's no non-awkward way to have a first meeting where you discuss the strengths and weaknesses of potential chairs for that group. Mm -hmm. So it's usually already been worked out. And so it sounds very democratic. Sometimes I think it's less democratic than just being straightforward and naming who's going to get appointed, how. It's it, it just every, not everybody has management skills. Chairs, a chair, a good chair. Those are skills and talents that are uh, very important to the direction and the, and the functionality of a committee. And, uh, you know, you can't, anyway, it, it, well, it, those, we would, those concern me too. So anyway, but I'm happy for the sake of this to, to, to move as we need to move. We would hope that um, a new committee may not recognize potential leadership skills, but we would hope that when the governor appoints a, a chair, that he or she would recognize that they need to have somebody who can really be a chair, if that makes sense. So, and then there was the- uh, Brian, Brian has a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. So the way it's going to be presented, the governor will still appoint, yes. but yeah. cannot appoint someone from law enforcement. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. and but the governor will appoint. Yeah. I'm that I, I remain firmly opposed. And what, what about the other um, groups that we wanted to be included? I'm, I'm getting there. Oh, sorry. What do you mean the other groups? The, uh, On the council? For, yes, for consideration, not just the, NAACP. Okay. So the, the um, I guess there are three chapters in Vermont, Bennington, Wyndham, and Chittenden. I didn't realize that Chittenden had one. And the feeling was that um, these are, uh, that this organization is a solid organization. It isn't necessarily controlled by an individual or um, the, that the direction isn't established by a particular individual, that they, um, represent national um, interests and that they are pretty, they have been working for a long time and have a lot of um, advocacy and legal um, oomph behind them. So they felt that um, it should stay that way. Otherwise, um, it, it is hard then to determine what really is a, a group and what is just a person who tends to say I'm speaking for a group. So they, they recommended keeping it that way. I think um, the, the main um, person that was consulted on this was Hal Colson from wherever he's from. I can't remember. Winooski. Winooski, okay. So they felt strongly that it should remain that. And I'm, I'm okay with that. And if there are three chapters, they will each um, forward names, three names to the governor is the way I understand it. So there will be a potential of nine people for the governor to pick two appointees, I think. Right. And they, they're, the um, name that's put forward by them does not even have to be a member of the MAACP. It could be somebody else. They are just the group that's forwarding the names. Okay. And then the last one was the uh, facial recognition. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think they heard our concerns and so I will kind of try and capsulize it here, but then I'll have Betsy and really tell us what the language is. But what we agreed on was that 
there would be a moratorium for law enforcement use until they come back with a plan to the legislature with advantages and disadvantages and how it would be used. And that the, the um, exception for drone use, which is usually what's used for search and rescue, would, would still apply. They could still use it for those purposes. But for law enforcement activities, they wouldn't use it until they came with a plan with more study. And we didn't put a date on that because they're the, if, if they want to use it, they're going to come with a report. If they have no interest in using it, then they're not going to come with a report. So we don't need to have a date. Betsy Ann, do you want to actually tell us what the language says? Sure. Hello. For the record, Betsy Ann Rass, Legislative Council. Uh, would you like me to do share screen on this tentative draft amendment so we can review it? Sure. Would you like to see it, committee people? Sure. Okay. sure. Could, we, well, could we post it? Could, would you be kind enough to have Gail post it too? Because I, I, your, the iPad is really tiny. Okay, I can, but this, the issue is that it's it's tentative. I can't yeah. state with certainty that this is actually oh, okay. going to be the text that's offered. So I got it, got it, got it. Um, is but it, if well, we're trying, give... that's the end. Do you yeah. want to just send it via email to the committee? Okay. Okay. Yeah. If what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that um, Sarah is going to bring it to their committee and see where they are, and they're trying to have it. Um, so that, so what we're doing today is looking at the kind of concepts behind it and what the final real language is, um, particularly on this one, the, the date that's, it's either a date or it isn't a date. <laughs> and um, that's not important, but um, this one I think is. Well, so I'll, I'll pick up on the uh, moratorium language. Mm -hmm. So in the bill, in the House GovOps current strike all, which is their official committee report, they would have in section 14, a statutory prohibition on the use of facial recognition technology, except as it is permitted with respect to drones, because the drone law, as you were saying, Madam Chair, already allows drones to use facial recognition technology in limited circumstances. Um, instead of a statutory prohibition, that section 14 would be um, replaced with a session law moratorium on facial recognition technology with the language right now saying until the use of facial recogni recognition te technology by law enforcement officers is authorized by an enactment of the General Assembly, a law enforcement officer shall not use facial recognition technology or information acquired through the use of it, unless the use would be permitted with respect to, dro to drones as currently authorized under the drone law. Um, there's still the same definition of what facial recogni recognition technology is, but related to this issue, this moratorium is this report back. Um, so right now there would be in the section that has all of the law enforcement recommendations, a section added to specifically address facial recognition technology that would state that after analyzing any law enforcement needs to use facial recognition technology, analyzing any potential inaccuracies or other limitations in the capacities of that technology, including implicit biases, and an opportunity for community involvement and feedback, the council would be required to recommend a statewide policy on officers acquisition and use of facial recognition technology in light of that moratorium in section 14. And if the council will recommend the authority for officers to acquire and use facial recognition technology, the council shall recommend a plan to mitigate any implicit bias that results from the use of that technology. So right now it is structured as the General Assembly would have to take another step in order to approve it. But at that point, the General Assembly could base its approval on um, what is recommended for its use and any limitations on its use is how it's currently drafted. Um, it's not set 
right now set to sunset as soon as the council sets, you know, submits a plan that the ban would be lifted um, just right now. So it's it would remain in legislative control so that you could decide whether there should be any statutory limitations. Does that sound like it would work from your perspective? Brian, Brian. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm not sure where we are in terms of the degree of facial recognition usage, but maybe you could tell me, Betsy Ann, if this scenario would not be allowed. I assume there are traffic cameras somewhere, maybe cameras in the Church Street Marketplace in Burlington, and someone has been reported lost. And so the camera picks up this person that by facial recognition, they've determined is the person. Since drones are the only thing called out in this, would law enforcement be able to use that camera to help reunite that lost person? I don't think so. As currently written, because it is a moratorium on officers using facial recognition technology. Okay. Well, I mean, but body cameras, what, I mean, I mean, they use body cameras for uh, court procedures and all, all sorts of things. That's facial recognition right there. No, it's not really. No. It's no, not, that, those were, that's just a video recording. Not facial, facial, recognition. So facial recognition, recognition takes is, into account uh, different dimensions of someone's face and projects that so that you are able to identify them with some degree of certainty. So, but how is that video in a bank, uh, you know, a video in a bank ATM or in a bank any different? I mean, well, it's a video camera, it's not facial so recognition. It's, so even though video is, pro, does provide facial recognition for law enforcement to review, it's not considered facial recognition? I don't right. think so. That's a very <laughs> technical term, facial yeah. recognition. The technology itself purports to identify the person rather than Got it. being reviewing Got it. the You're footage being. and determining it is a person. Right. Well, I, think I understand why the house is doing this and I don't disagree with it because it could be used in a very nasty negative way. Right. But did they take any testimony on whether any law enforcement agencies in Vermont are currently using it to any degree? I don't know. I, I don't recall that testimony being taken. Okay. Do we know when we, I'm sorry. Go ahead. They talk about uh, um, allowing it to be used in, for the drones. What do they do with the drones? That, you know, what, what uses are that? Yeah, so lawn, there can be the use of drones in, in the drone statute. It's 20 VSA 4622, um, which uh, provides the authorization and conditions in which op law enforcement can use drones. And in this section, um, in subdivision D2, um, it provides that facial recognition shall not be used on any data that a drone collects on any person, home, or area other than the target of surveillance. Um, and then there's other limits for um, when a drone can actually be used. So it, it does allow um, drones to use facial recognition technology um, when there is a target of surveillance. Um, but the targeted um, surveillance. To be a target of surveillance, do you have to have a warrant? Yes, it's, it's yes. Um, they can't use it for crime investigations unless there is a warrant and for example, it specifically prohibits law enforcement from using a drones for um, when people are exercising their uh, constitutional rights of free speech and assembly. So they don't, they don't, they have to have already identified a person as sort of a someone that is whatever, lack of a better way, put, committed a crime and they're providing surveillance to look for that person as opposed to just randomly surveilling a group of people doing a protest or something. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. I think that one of the major differences between the video, as Betsy pointed out, and the <coughs> facial recognition is that 
in the video, you see the person's face and then the police officer says, oh, I know who that is, or they, they figure out who it is. But in facial recognition, it's the technology itself that says that's who it is. And the errors are pr pretty dramatic at times. And particularly um, <clears throat> the facial recognition technology cannot, has a real hard time differentiating people's faces who are people of color. Um, and the darker your skin, the more error there is. Right. So um, I would be probably easy to, for them to pick up. Um, Brian would be a little harder just because your skin is darker than mine. And uh, Susanna's would be almost impossible to distinct. So I think there, there are some real issues with uh, using it as the, as the means of identifying. And I well, I mean, the same could be said about a crappy a, a bank camera with, you know, with the lousy video. I mean, they do enhancements of that to try and understand whose face it actually is. I, I don't know. I, it's, it, I, think that, I think the difference, Allison, is that when you go to court, the cop or somebody has identified that person. With facial recognition, my understanding is, is that it's that technology that identifies the person right. and presents it as evidence. Right, or, or incomplete te technology that's still evolving. And I think that's part of my challenge with prohibiting its use it's altogether. It's not being prohibited. It's, yeah. It's a moratorium. Right, it's now a moratorium. Right. Until they come back saying, this is why we need to use it. Yeah. And we did, this, we did the same thing with license plate readers. Right. No, and I'm fine with this as a moratorium. I, I, okay. I'm fine with this actually right now. Okay, Brian. And Thank then you, Chris. Do you do you know whether law enforcement weighed in on this one way or the other? You know, I I don't know. I haven't heard anything from them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I will reach out to um, Sherling and see. If if they don't have any objection, I don't. And, and I, I think that question, Brian, is a good one uh, generally. Uh, I can't remember uh, what, how Michael testified about the changes in the council membership and stuff. Have they, has the administration weighed in on this bill as it is now from the House? Um, they've been weighing in. Yeah, right. But I, and, and they're okay so far, right? Well, they may not be okay with everything 100%. I have, I don't know, but the. Um, I'm just curious. I was just curious. I, I couldn't, I couldn't remember what they said about the council. Anyway. Yeah, I remember when the um, commissioner and the colonel and the major were in. Oh, right. Committee, we're all in. Uh, it, we mentioned to them at that point that S124 would change the council membership, but um, they haven't provided testimony on the actual proposed changes to the membership right. as proposed by the house. That's what I thought. Chris? Yeah, the, you know, the, the other piece too. So, I mean, the maybe for Allison, but the, so whatever digital video image data you have is, can just be recorded, but then you can also run it through processors that then try to do facial recognition. That so there's that separate step that happens after you've cap captured a video stream or still image stream. Then on top of that, you need to take that facial recognition software. It needs to consult a database. Well, whose pictures are in that database, and why, right. and how, and what rights do you have? So there's like a behind the scenes. There's, I think, quite a lot of legal complexity about yeah. privacy. Yes, I, I agree. I think there are lots of concerns with this technology. Which is why I think that what we, what we proposed to them was not to use the technology until there was a report back. That's what I have written down for everybody here yeah. is that we had a uh, maybe um, didn't we didn't know enough? It was a big leap. Uh, yeah. We needed to have more, no more report to the legislature, do a study. Um, so, and that's what we have here. 
That's yeah. what we have here. Just want to point right. out though, the General Assembly would need to take the next step to authorize yeah. it as it's currently yeah. written. So based on that feedback, yeah. And then at that point, the the decision is when and how and in what circumstances can it get used and how do you collect the database that Chris was referring to, things like that. Those would yeah. those all have to be discussed, I think, before well, before it's used. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I will um, I will send a note to um, Sherling about the about the bill in general, but about this in particular. Okay. okay. And. Okay, and this this one was a lot easier to, to come to some resolution than the other one that <laughs> to uh, one nineteen, which is what judiciary has, and it's anyway, it's causing lots of um, ulcers among many people. So a kerfluffle. A huge kerfluffle. So, so anyway, okay. So I guess we can um, let Sarah know that we're okay with these amendments. And if I hear otherwise from the commissioner, I'll let you know. Does that work? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. And it looks like we weren't able to get a hold of. No, Tucker. Tucker says that he'll be available after 2.30, and I told him we'd probably be finished by then. What time is it now? It's 20 of 2. Uh oh. We could come I, back. Uh, we could also adjourn. Uh, we, could, we, we, we absolutely could adjourn and deal yeah. with this on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, anybody else have anything they want to do yes <laughs> got plenty of things i want to do but uh, no, we, I mean we have to adjourn today. first <laughs> so yeah i know I, we I all have, this. we're gonna have a pretty heavy frost tonight and tomorrow yeah so that's true. you have to go into your gardens now and pick anything you want to salvage and fill your vases with every flower that you can and pick every tomato you can and all the basil you can what are tomatoes? Yeah. What's basil? basil. <laughs> They're the same as potatoes. Right. On this topic, guess what There's I just saw yesterday? Those, Wait, what did you see, Betsy? A hummingbird. Why? What, what is it doing here? Yes. That's we bad. still have them. Not here. We we still have them at our at yeah. my house. Are you feeding them? Nope. We just have lots of flowers. Yeah. Lots of flowers. We yeah. do too. I I've been stunned to see them here so late. They better get their little bodies going because they're going to freeze their little tukuses off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Very worrisome. Okay, so um, I'm okay with adjourning. <laughs> okay, I am too. I'm going to go okay. visit my 95-year-old mother. Okay, so right. we will see you at Tuesday at 1 o'clock. If good. not before. Thank you.